Hi guys, my name is James. I'm a third year medical student studying at the University of Liverpool. And today we're going to look at which university should I choose? If you haven't done already, like and subscribe to the channel for future updates on what I'm gonna do, my life as a medical student and more tips and tricks on university and lifestyle, fitness and all that kind of stuff as well. So the video is going to be split up into three different parts. There's the first is the timeline of medical school and becoming a doctor. The second part is how to get to each stage, what stages, what sort of exams and tests you have to do and parts to get into the different stages. And finally, it's gonna be which university should I choose based on that information. So if you wanna just skip to the bit that you want to view, there'll be timestamps in the link below. Uh, and if not, join me for the rest of it. So point number one. So the timeline of from a medical student to a doctor is simply five to six years of medical school stuff. You then have two years of foundation training, up to about eight years of speciality training, and then you finally become a consultant. From the end of medical school, you are classed as a doctor, and you'll be in that foundation training, essentially trying to decide what speciality you want to go into in those two years uh, in a specific area of the country, rotating around a couple of hospitals. When you're in speciality training, you're essentially training in one narrow field of medicine or surgery that you want to do, and that'll be what you'll be doing for the rest of the time and really get into the nitty gritty parts of that. So point number two, how do we get onto each of the different stages? So throughout medical school, you have uh, exams at the end of each year that will contribute towards F pass points. Now, half of those points will be decided through your end of year exams. The other half is sat in one exam at the end of the time you are a, a student. So that's called the SJT, it's a situational judgment kind of test. And like I said, half of your points are on that exam. Half your points of your whole degree is on that exam. So it's quite a big exam <laughs> that you have to sit. And those points then rank you in the country from all different medical schools about where you are in the country. So no matter which university you go to, it won't be put on there and you'll be ranked. And that ranking score is, is then used to determine where you're going to go for your uh, foundation two years. So your two years of foundation. And the country splits up into deaneries, essentially uh, as almost like counties in the country. You, you rank which county you want to go to or deanery that you want to go to and the hospitals that you want to go in there. The higher the points you have, essentially, the more likely you are to have the choice of hospital that you want to go to and the choice of area that you want to go to for those two years. Can't stress enough that the university that you go to isn't on, included on that ranking score. And even if it is, it doesn't really matter because let's say you went to a top university and you're down at the bottom, doesn't really reflect very well either. So those ranking scores uh, are then used for your two years of, of foundation and where you want to go. So you're in foundation, you've done your placements, you've decided what you want to do, you then have to go on to speciality training. And now uh, this is a bit more complicated. So you have an interview, multiple different interviews, you have to have, provide a CV, an academic CV of all you've done. So things from research, audits, projects, uh, poster presentations, publications, uh, your exam results that you've had in other tests that you have to set for your specific speciality. So there's the speciality exam that you have to pass. And then, yeah, so all those combined to, to create your spaces. Now, these are very competitive spaces if you choose certain specialties. Certain surgical specialties are very limited places. Uh, they could be less than 10 in the whole country for some specialities. Uh, others are a lot more copious and there's a lot more of those. Uh, but some of them are very competitive. So you can't just do well in exams. You have to do other stuff alongside that. Like I mentioned, research, projects, publications as well. So those will contribute to that. And if you do well in that and get enough of those other points that you have to give to, to do your spe certain specialty, you go on to that then specialty. You then have similar exams and then you become a consultant at the end. So point number three, how do I choose my uni? And I'm going to split this up into three different parts about what main things you could you should consider. There's going to be lots of other things that you should take into consideration, but these are the main ones. The first one is look at the course. So there's a variety of different courses out there from traditional, which is three years of um, 
sort of pre-placement where you you have just um, anatomy, physiology, the science aspect of medicine, and then you have uh, usually a master's course, and then you have a, a placement placement for two years to then put all what you've learned into practice, and that's usually at places like Oxford, Cambridge. Uh, I think other universities do it like Imperial. Correct me if I'm wrong with that one though. Um, so yeah, those are that's one of the types. The second type, CBL and spiral curriculums, which are the things that I'm doing. If you want to know a bit more about that, I've done a separate video about what to expect at the University of Liverpool, one, years one to three. is a really in detailed uh, video summarising every different aspect of your course and what you get assessed on in each different stage. And that will be linked in the video as well. Uh, you also have things called problem-based learning. Now these are getting phased out quite, quite quickly actually. So I'll be surprised if anyone is going to still do that and many universities are still doing that but yeah problem-based learning isn't really a thing anymore so those are mainly your two different types point number two where do you want to go where do you want to live in the country it's a massive massive factor i would recommend visiting the place get a feel for where you are get a feel for the accommodation but not just the accommodation of where they put you for undergrad but also the area where you're going to be living in terms of the typical student area um, have a look at that and maybe try and get in contact with as many people as you can from different unis who are studying not just medicine but any any course get people you know and ask questions go on student forums go on online websites get a feel for what it's really like living in the place and how much other stuff that the city has to offer number three this is very important and it's something that i didn't really um, consider when i was looking at my unis is workload. I used to think that all unis were going to give you the same amount of work and you're going to have to do the same thing no matter what uni you go to. That's not the case. Uh, my uni in Liverpool is probably about a medium workload. They provide, they, they expect you to do a lot of stuff, they expect you to learn a lot of things, expect you to have lots of seminars, lots of other things, there's loads of stuff going on, you are very busy. However, it's not quite your Cambridge and your Oxford and your very competitive unis. They are going to have a considerable amount more to learn than what we do and I know because I've got friends who are there and I've got know what kind of stuff they have to learn um, so if you're very driven and you want to uh, know as much as you can you really want to push yourself then by all means go for those unis and you'll probably have a brilliant time there uh, if you want to be able to do other things like uh, really focus on sport focus on research projects and audits and publications, which is what I've been doing as I've got more spare time and other things like that, then maybe go for somewhere like Liverpool for your mid-range, I would say, um, unis. You're still going to have the same outcome as a doctor. You're still gonna get that doctor status. All you can say is if you go to Cambridge or Oxford is, oh, I went to Cambridge or Oxford for uni. You get the sort of, oh, wow, kind of thing. Um, it might, maybe, if you went to Cambridge and Oxford, I think it might contribute a little bit towards speciality training, potentially. You might see, oh, Cambridge on your degree, and you think, okay, they, they, they will have had a very good uh, knowledge of all these different things, potentially. However, if you've got someone who's went to Cambridge Uni and someone who's done loads of publications, loads of research, loads of audits, loads of um, certain committees who've done X, Y, Z, extra, then you'll be more likely to choose that other person who's committed to the, that kind of speciality and things like that. Again, if you wanted to have that kind of college life um, as opposed to a typical uni, then again, you only really get that at Cambridge and Oxford and some maybe, I think Hull and York do one. Um, so yeah, but it shouldn't really be the be all and end all. But what I'm trying to say is that there's varying levels of difficulty in workload and just because you go to do medicine doesn't mean you're gonna get the same experience and the same level of, of work as every other student in the UK. So where should you apply? Well, if I was in your shoes, I would make sure that I had everything in place. I had my grades were good. I had my GCSEs were the correct uh, grades for where I was applying, uh, which I didn't do. Uh, I didn't get into Cardiff because I had five A stars and four A's and they wanted 6A stars and yeah, I didn't get it. I was rejected straight off the bat. So make sure you have the requirements for the course that you want to do. 
scour their website for every single bit of information um, and yeah maybe see how much weighting you have on certain things make sure you've got all your cv is up to date or personal statements or whatever they say um, all your volunteering and all that kind of stuff and try and do that throughout a levels to get your chance of increasing as well but yeah thank you very much for watching if you have any questions pop them in the comment section or feel free to message me and i'll be more than happy to answer those thank you very much for watching and i'll see you later guys